Hello everybody and welcome back to my home here in East Tennessee on this beautiful day in April. And I'm going to be doing a repot with you all on my beautiful Fowl Matuo King Bellina. Uh, she has done extremely well in this small Orchiata bark. As you all know, I bought her from Hauserman Orchids back in June. And the root system on, on this fowl I got to show you what Orchiata bark does. This is the root system in 10 months. This is 10 months of growth that you see. And I should have really repotted her last week because as you see, some roots have grown down through these holes. Um, it really wasn't this bad this time last week. When the roots take off on these fowls, they really take off on you. So I'm hoping that they're not too cemented um, between these holes in this pot. I'm going to be taking her from a four inch orchid pot to either a five or six inch orchid pot. I'm really not sure, but um, as you see, I need to get to this now. Don't want those roots to grow anymore. So I have soaked this root system for about 30 minutes and um, that really does help because it keeps the roots from snapping on you so easily, especially with Phalaenopsis roots. If they're dry, they're going to snap on you easier. And this is what I'm going to be repotting her in, or really kind of an up potting her in, is the small Orchiata bark. This is a hardwood bark that is very long lasting. I get this from my sponsor, the Orchid Supply Store. Here is all their information, and I always have the information in my description box below as well. And don't forget to use my coupon code AMY for a 12% viewer's discount. And also, if you're in the continental United States, you get free shipping. Okay, so here we go. I am just so hoping that this comes out easier <laughs> than what I think it's going to. Um, I really like to get to my fowls before this kind of thing happens. I'm going to be saving all of this bark. And as you see, this, this pot is just full of roots. Oh, how I wished I would have repotted this sooner. And as you see, I'm just kind of pressing on the sides here. And I'm keeping all this, I'm keeping all this bark. Someone asked me in one of my repotting videos, where did you get the pretty tray? This is actually just one of those um, fluid catchers that you can pick up at Lowe's or any garden center. It's really nothing that special. It works just fine. It's actually the depth that I like to work with. It keeps things from going just all over my table. And as you see, I hope you all can see as I do this, I really take my time. Um, I don't wanna just pull up. All oh, the good thing is, is do you see how the roots? <gasps> Yay! I'm glad I took you all with me on this because when I saw the bottom of this pot last week, these roots weren't even growing out of the holes. I, I'm not kidding. It was, it just happens all of a sudden. Okay, so that one root tip I did lose, but that's okay. But that's okay. It's right there, but that's okay. Okay, so here we go. And there is absolutely no need for me to throw any of this bark away. All right, what do you all think? Oh my goodness. That's not going to buy me a lot of time at all. This is a five inch, okay. That looks better to me because, okay, when I repotted this last June, there was too much bark like on the top of this pot. I felt like there was too much bark for the pot. Let's put it to you that way. You know, sometimes you can have the top of the plant almost sitting up out of the pot so I'm going to do the six inch. I can't believe I'm saying that, but I'm going to reuse this bark. Now I'm going to tell you why. 
This bark is hardwood bark, like I mentioned before, and this will last for a very long time. I'm talking years. As long as you don't have any root rot. Do you see any rotten roots here? None. These are beautiful roots. So there's no need. Now, if you took this out of this pot and you smelled something foul, like something, you know how when mold grows that smell, then you're going to need to probably not use that bark again. Or what I'll do is even just rinse it for a while um, and use it like on a greenhouse plant or something. Um, not my orchid. I use the very, very best on my orchids. Um, but I will reuse this like either for an outside container if it smells weird. Um, because really, this is hardwood. So it's going to last a long, long time. I know I keep mentioning that, but this bark is just special. Uh, when I started growing orchids, this was not available. Orchiata was not available. And I lost a lot of plants due to really bad bark. So I'm thrilled to have access to such awesome bark. When you use the right things, um, your orchids are just going to grow for you so much better and it's going to be so much more, um, it's going to be easier on you. So I'm going to reuse this. It is perfectly good. No mold, no nothing, no dead roots, no anything here. So yay. So I'm going to reuse this and I'm going to add some more. Um, I thought that I was going to have enough, but I'm probably going to need more than this to fill up a six inch pot. And the more I think about it, the more that's what I'm going to be using. Okay, so let's, let's just kind of start here. And you know me, I love to make a mess. If I'm not making a mess, I'm not having any fun. Okay, reuse all that. I'm glad that you all get to come along with me because it helps me to think about what I'm doing. It helps a lot, actually. Um, I was getting ready to do the video and I thought, well, I hadn't sterilized my scissors. You know, that kind of little thing that you get into the middle of a repot and you're thinking, oh, I should have done a little bit better of a job getting everything ready. Okay, well, I just put her right back down in there like that. Yeah, I think that's looking good. And then we're just going to fill all this in. It looks to me like she's getting ready um, to bloom again soon. Okay, I'm going to fill in a little bit more and I think I'm going to get some gloves on. This is the reason why I like to wear gloves. I'll be right back. And there was one little tiny root that was kind of mm, brown and squishy that I found. That was the only thing that I found. Every single root on this is really, really good. So like I said, that's what you can expect from Orchiata bark. That little tiny dead root was right in the very center. It was one of the oldest roots of the, the whole plant. So I'm not surprised that I lost one little tiny root from the very center of the root system. Um, but what I'm doing now, I've got my gloves on, that feels so much better. I am tapping this down so that it starts settling. And like I said, I'm using the previous Orchiata bark. That's the reason why it's wet. Remember I said that I had soaked this root system. Now, if you're new, if you're a beginner, and you don't feel comfortable using your old bark, which this is not old bark. Um, 10 month old Orchiata bark is not old bark. Now, if you're using anything else, unless it's a really good fur bark that you get from the orchid supply store, that Rexius bark, the Rexius fur bark, oh my goodness, that is good bark. Again, that's a long lasting bark. If you're using a cheaper type of a bark, you're gonna to have to use new bark. 
That's the big deal about Orchiata. If you take your orchid out of the bark, and it's got all kinds of dead roots, then you're going to need to re, you're going to need to replenish that bark with new bark. Don't use the same bark if it smells really bad. But there's a huge difference in the quality of Orchiata bark and just regular old orchid bark like we used to have to use many years ago. Ooh, I did not like that stuff. I'm so grateful for Archaeata Bark, um, and I'm so grateful to my sponsor for sending me this. I love this bark. Okay, so let's keep tapping that in. I've used, yep, I've used all the old. I shouldn't say that. I used all the bark that was in the pot before. There we go. Because I don't want you all to think that all bark is the same. It's not. This is treated with dolomite, which is a natural source of calcium and magnesium. So you don't have um, repot shock. That kind of helps to cushion the plant. It, it's, a, it's an immediate source of calcium and magnesium for the plant right from the very day that you repot it. Now, some of you have asked me that you've had some Orchiata bark for a year or two in a pot and it starts to turn white. That is actually the dolomite. There's nothing wrong with the Orchiata bark. That's just what, that's just what it does. So it looks like this repot is done. I'm glad I only lost one root tip. That will grow back in no time. But as you see, she looks like she's starting to gear up to um, bloom again this summer. And I can't wait to see this orchid bloom again. I can't wait to smell it again. It has the most divine smell. And here's the finished product. Wow, that looks so nice. What I do, instead of putting it in an orchid pot like this, right after I repot for about a month or so, I just keep them on a more flat surface like a plate or something so that I can make sure that I water it when it needs to be. Um, especially this time of the year, we're actually having some 80 degree weather here pretty soon. So when you have a brand new repot and you've got hot weather like that, make sure you check the moisture in your pot. You don't want the, you don't want the orchid to get dehydrated or stressed because you're not watering it enough, especially with new bark. Um, the good thing about being able to use the, let's call it the previous bark, is that there's moisture in that bark, so it's not going to be as hard on you when you go to repot to try to keep the plant watered. When it's all brand new bark, you've got to really keep a good eye on it, but you can see very clearly with these pots these also come from the orchid supply store. They're awesome. They're sturdy. Um, the ventilation holes on the bottom, there's plenty. Let me show you what the bottoms of these look like. I really love these pots. So make sure you're keeping an eye on your pots. Make sure that your roots aren't getting too dried out, too dehydrated, especially with the weather, the way that it is in the spring. And Christmas came in April. I'm so excited. I got some new products from the Orchid Supply Store. Thank you, Ken. I appreciate this so much. Um, I got some extra small um, Orchiata bark. Okay, the extra small. Let me tell you what I do with it. Several of you have asked me, what do you do with different sizes of bark? The thing about Orchiata bark is you cannot break it apart. You can't take the large bark and break it into tiny little pieces. This is a hardwood bark. So the extra small bark is excellent to amend your soil with, your potting soil, when you're repotting your Thanksgiving cacti or practically any of your house plants, especially if you live in an area where you get mold a lot because it lightens up the potting mix. You can add perlite as well, but the extra small bark is just excellent for either 
potting up very, very small little orchids like my little Lepanthopsis astrophora. That's what it's growing in. The little tiny miniatures, that's what they like to grow in and to amend your soil with. I also got some professional growers blend for practically any house plant that I have. And I got a huge brick of spag moss. That's 40 liters of spag moss. Oh my goodness, I'm so excited. I really do feel like Christmas came. Y'all, the spag moss, it is absolutely the best. It is very long lasting. It's kind of to moss what Orchiata is to bark. The moss lasts, I've, I've used the same moss, um, like if I didn't need to up pot a plant for three years, it should last you that long. No other moss lasts you that long. It is excellent and I can't say enough good about it. And I requested some decorative pots. I love decorative pots, as you all know. Um, it's kind of like jewelry for your orchids and your, and your plants. Look at this, how beautiful. I love this. And you can actually take this out and have a big drainage hole. Now that is clever. I love this. These are beautiful. And look at the, how it drains. Actually, the inside of this is just regular clay. It's not glazed. And so the water will be collected down underneath that bottom and um, wicked away from the plant. That is clever too. I love those, those are so, so pretty. Those are five inch ceramic pots. And I also got some Glacier Gold compost. This stuff is awesome. Um, I use this for many, many things. I throw a handful of it in my potting mix and um, yeah, it's just great. The plants love it. I also like to use this around my fruit trees. Fruit trees just love compost. So some of this is going to go around some of my potted plants and some of this is going to go around my cherry trees. I've got a Rainier cherry tree in my yard. I'm excited about using that. So like I said, Christmas came early. I'm excited. And as I end the video, I'll share the beautiful blooms on my Fal Sogo Lawrence Tahiti Sunset, one of my favorites. Wow, when you look at this, you can't hardly speak. Just the coloration of this one and the striping and the, there's like polka dotted and striped and everything, the, the patterns on this are just striking. So I wanted to just tell you all, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for all the kind words, your comments, your blessings that you send to me. I appreciate them so much. You all are just the best. And um, before I end the video, I'd love to say the blessing over you, your families, and your plants. May the Lord bless you and keep you. Make His face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn His face toward you and give you His peace. Y'all make it a great day. We'll talk to you next time.